Growing up as a kid in the mid 90s, I was a Nintendo child through and through. Weekend upon weekend will go by as my brother and I play SNES and Nintendo 64 until the cows came home. Back then, I was practically partial to my brother's N64 and the set of games he had with it. As a result, he those got to be played more by me and made by Mario Kart 64, my favorite game. Nazi Zombies and Modern Warfare have pretty much made taken up most of my gaming time as I became a part of the Xbox Live Age, but Mario Kart 64 still held a place in my heart as my all-time favorite. All of that was before these past two weeks. Now I won't touch an N64 at all, and I rarely play any Nintendo titles. A few months back, when I brashly sold my N64 and my SNES at my yard sale my family was holding, Adverse and Egrance was brought to my discovery of emulators. In my eyes, their ability to deliver classic games an unlimited quantity at no cost was a second to none. I don't remember much about that yard sale, but the family whom I sold it had left distinct memory in my mind. The family consisted of a Hispanic woman with two very young children. She didn't know much English at the time, and I didn't know any Spanish. The language barrier complicated things, and, but it didn't hinder the sale entirely. She walked over the SNES and N64 with roughly 20 games in total, and I walked off with 40 bucks. It hadn't taken me long to realize that this was an outburst decision. When my brother found out he was frustrated, but he agreed to help me get it back, we came into town two weeks ago and on his second day, head off to our local used game st shop. The store was a pretty nice place called Game Giant. My brother knew the owner and the employees as well as he gotten a lot of his PS2 games from them before he had moved out of town. As fate would have it, the woman I sold it to would sell my N64 to the shop. We got it for 50 bucks, which is pretty cheap. The budget wouldn't allow any games, however, so we were under the impression that we could walk out empty-handed. But after we explained our financial predicament to the owner, he told us they had a copy of Mario Kart 64 that they were giving away for free. Oddly enough, he waited for all the other customers to leave before he gave it to us. His hands were shaking and he started to shudder. He also let us know that we were more than entitled to a refund should we choose to take it back. Now, I believed in ghosts and still do, but the idea of a haunted video game seemed implausible to my name. My brother was a total skeptic and agreed to with me. Thinking nothing of the store owner's strange behavior, we went home already night-filled plan with revived memories. We arrived back at home about 4 p.m. versus when we our first older of other business. I chose Toad, my personal favorite ch from my childhood because of unparalleled acceleration. My brother chose Luigi, his personal favorite because he's the fastest at the medium weight of characters. Shells were tossed and bananas were thrown until 6. We had dinner and then we dwelled into the Grand Prix, Prix race, races. All the cups were completed on gold. Whoever played this game was very close to getting everything, as the only things left to complete were the reverse cups. It wasn't any fun to build on someone else's file, so we went to the data to clear it. The, na the lapse times I read it 6 minutes and 66 seconds. Not only this was really creepy, but also illogical. How could someone get a perfect Grand Prix he record at the time trial of times like that? My brother being skeptic suggested that someone was trying to mess with us, but not being inclined to disagree, I cleared the data with the press of a button, and it was undoubtedly the worst decision I've ever made in my life. The game shut up by itself, only static could be heard for at least good five minutes. Dominantly audible was depressed, a scared voice of Mario repeating this cryptic catchphrase. You have driven us, he had said in Melcholia, and now you must watch us suffer. My brother thought of that was just something someone had programmed into the cartridge. I had been playing the game for an entire time after dinner, and I refused to play it after what had happened. 
My brother was visibly shaken, but he was still wanted to prove to me that nothing was out of the ordinary was wrong with this game. When he played it with me watching the next morning, he switched on the game without the incident, the start menu, and the player select screens were all normal. He chose a start cup and we started the first race. All the characters looked normal, except for the things that were very wrong. The borders on the sides of the track didn't display their usual Wario Stadium. Instead, they read, You will pay. When the race started, Latku had a mean, menacing smirk on his face. Evil would be the best way to describe it. After his design and said number one, he said die rather than the usual go. Every time someone slipped on a banana, they didn't make them cheerful, cartoonish outbursts they normally would make. Their cart would splutter out of black smoke and begin to fume out of the engine, accompanied by their screams and cries for help. My brother's character Luigi hurled over the first closed range red shell in the entire race. It hit Yoshi with the explosive crash and his cart went into pieces. The similar little dinosaur was now bisected and past the spine, crawling along the track begging for this to end. My brother was visibly perturbed, but he pressed on and finished the race. Right when he f f passed the finish line, a distorted version of the victory theme played accompanied by a slow, distorted demonic laugh and several explosion sounds. As Luigi made his victory lap, all of the racers whose carts were smoking had died and their carts exploded. Charred 64-bit body parts littered the course and the fume of smoke hoovered over the racetrack. In front of all the racers' names, it said, R.I.P. After all this was finished, he shut it off. The TV stayed on as he flicked the switch. Mario appeared on the screen and his cart was mangled in a mess besides his sprawled body. Bones protrude from his arms and legs and patches of flesh were missing, revealing his muscles. His organs had been thrown onto the floor around him and his body uncontrollably twitched in agony. His eyes were bloodshot and filled with tears. Blood and bruises were covered his pained face. He was panting as if he were about to die. Mario had lost a cheerful animated look and was dawned on Deary, a solemn one. He softly wept as he gave his own grave warning. You should have never cleared that data. His records had died. Now we will die too. You haven't driven him to this, so you must watch us suffer. After all that, the words appear on the screen in the game's colorful, upbeat front. You have driven us. You have driven him. My brother refused to play through the game's torture any longer. He couldn't see after the seeing the game. He had loved it for so long being perverted into this. I agreed to play in his place. So in exchange, he got a video camera to immortalize the madness. I had a sour courage ridge to turn the system back on. Blood and gore by itself didn't bother me. It was seeing all the suffering. It was too much. But something inside me pushed the power button on the N64. I wish I hadn't. The interest of all my peace of mind and my sanity. The title screen showed the characters going down the hill. Donkey Kong was splitting Luigi's skull in half with a buzzsaw. As opposed to his hoisting up a green shell, the look on his face wasn't a, one of mischief either. It was one of pure bloodlust. A sick elation of it being the orchestrator of such chaos and carnage, Peach and Yoshi and Mario had looks of primal fear at this scene. Obviously trying to driven away, a cloudy lightning mudded the sky, replaced with the mild orange sunset. Flames danced in the distance as well as what sounded like a heartbeat played in place of the cheery soundtrack. The extra band, excited welcome Mario Kart, was replaced with the sobs of Mario. The entire sight disgusted me, but I managed to press start. The game capsulated right straight into the player's your select screen. The facial expressions of all the characters had drastically changed. All the good characters, Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Toad, had an expression of utter horror on their faces. Some shook their heads nervously, while others remained completely still. Bowser, Donkey Kong, and Wario were unaimously showing bloodlust. 
not a playful, menacing look, but one of pure greed and evil. And I moved on the toad and selected him. And so this happy trademark, Wahoo! He started to weep mournfully. I was starting to race on a dejected than the usual version of Bowser's castle. The music was the same, except it was a lower pitch and much more obnoxious sounding. It sounded so creepy it disturbed me. The first thing I noticed is that Peach was missing from the starting lineup. Latsuku had even more of an nefarious looking expression than Peach was missing, but of course, he did earlier in the Wario Stadium race. The same disturbing introduction produced itself once again. Three, two, one, die. All the cars had passed the bridge. A flame shooting out statue demon who stood right in the place of where Bowser would normally be. Bowser, Wario, and Donkey Kong all veered off to take place in the next statue. The audible conversation could be heard. The satanic figure speaking the tongues not uttered by mortal men. All three of the main villains appeared to be able to speak and understand the Artratic language. Suddenly, a burst of flame shot out and killed Luigi. The three characters laughed in a sixth tone, a tone that implemented that they were in the loving sight of such a dismay. Luigi's flesh was charred, and his muscle was exposed in many places. As the villains all laughed, the, deme the demon repeated the cryptic, reoccurring message. You have driven us. Peach's fate was soon dismally apparent. As Mario, I drifted to the corner to evade the deathly torch of the demon's breath. I spotted her behind the bars of the womp cage. She was tied with them to the thick rope. Her eyes were missing and their sockets as she cried blood. Thick, colligated, blood-stained, and tired in front of her dress. Each time the greenish rock thumped in the ground, she threw up blood, creating a pool that filled up the entire bottom of the translucent torture chamber. Although her torture, she emotionlessly choked out this sounding message. You have driven them. With a final thump, pieces of her body went everywhere. The womp laugh in the same tone that the free villains did. Mario and my character, Toad, were the only ones alive at this point. After what happened to Peach, my brother threw up in his mouth a little. I had asked him if he got everything on camera and he did. So I unpaused the game and continued the race. I managed to dodge the outburst of flames and meditate from the demonic statue at all three laps. At this point, it wasn't even about winning or losing. It was about keeping my character pretty much alive. I didn't know whatever dark forces the game possessed. Whatever was inside that game, making all this happen wasn't going anywhere anytime soon as I doubt the capacity for mercy. That is, assuming that I would show me anything it should possess it. I didn't know what would happen to my character if I let him die, and I didn't want to find out. This was no longer a game. I felt as if someone's life was on the balance, possibly mine. I finished first ahead of Mario, but a somber sounding version of the losing theme played again. It said RIP in front of the name, our names. Except this time it was different. This time it said Richard which was my actual name, and the screen faded out to the Womp Laugh, which was scary itself. I was delivered into a sick version of the familiar environment. It was Rainbow Road, but there were no rainbows. Patterns of flesh, veins, eyeballs, and various internal body parts created the floor. Wario, Bowser, and Donkey Kong weren't even present at this race. Mario and I were alone, waiting for this grim anticipation for the race's dejected beginning. Our carts left tracks of blood, I went down the long tracks at the beginning. Mario performed a super trick. If you hop right over, the drop gets steep. Your cart will fly above everyone else's and you'll have a slight advantage. When Mario hit the ground, his wheels flew off of his cart. His body landed on the track with a hyperlistic crunch. As he cried out in pain, his arms and legs were broken and he pleaded me to end it. I yelled, he yelled out to me and as I passed, run me over, end my suffering. Drive me. The sky was filled with stars as usual, and the music that played was sped up. Backwards rendition of the Royal Raceway's soundtrack. The neon lights were altered. 
Instead of the happy-looking depictions of the characters, they were in agony. Each of them was suffering some sort of grotesque death. Three of the villainous characters just gave menacing looks, and they were all casting ridiculous death stares at the character. They were also had speech bubbles, saying things like, You will burn! One of the comments especially disturbed me and said, You have driven us! You will pay! It was the final lap now. Latku laughed, and I could have sworn I heard some chuckle from my room. My brother did, and that was it was from him. He told me to turn off the game or he was leaving. I obviously wouldn't do that. I had no idea what would happen to Toad, and if I quit right then and there, I couldn't get past the guilt. Now it was a matter of death for life. The game now convoyed the character's range of emotions to so accurately, much to my accurately, I felt as if I left Toad hanging. I would be condemning him to an eternal hell if I continued to play. Mario was still lying there, barely alive, begging to be put out of his misery. But I refused to give in my satis the fast satisfaction to the game. I completed the race, and just like last time, it said R.I.P. Richard. My place now read 666 instead of first. I really got scared. How the hell did this game know I was playing? How could it speak to me? How did it even know my name? Never had a video game elected emotions of such magnitude. Excited by fear or primal, I preserved, hoping all of this madness would soon come to an end. I could preserve my sanity, and what I saw next will haunt me forever. Toad spawned in front of the Mario 64 castle in the Royal Raceway. All the greenery was ablaze, and the waterfall filled the surrounding moat with blood. Macabre figures could be seen in the distance. The sky was black and was filled with lightning. Bursts of lava erupted in the distance, where the yellow sand should be, and where I laid the flesh-like ground I encountered on Rainbow Road. I legitimately fear for my life at this point. This looked like hell. No, it was hell. It had the pressing on, the gripping terror. I approached the winner's podium, and blood flew up behind me. Bowser was in first, Donkey Kong in second, Wario in third. They were all laughing as the fire-breathing demon from Bowser's castle stood behind them with a greedy smirk. The floating fish above, a look of stark bloodlust that came across the castle's eerie, shadowed face behind the podium, stood the characters in the states right before they died, disfigured and clinging to life. Except for their eyes, they were all missing. They were bleeding like Peach was earlier, that soulless look looming over their sockets. They were unable to see anything, but they were staring back at me. Their faces no longer displayed expressions of suffering or anguish. They were blank, looks of benefit of any expression. You have driven us. They says this one. Suddenly the swelling noise was made, and as if the trophy were to come out, instead it was much different. Blood was everywhere as a huge sword came down and sliced Bowser in half. The demon tore apart everyone else as Toad watched. He spared Toad for some reason, and at the last moment, Toad turned to face the screen. His eyes were now professedly bleeding and soulless. He chanted an illusion. The demon sat beside him. You have left us. You have damned us. You have driven us. The game then shut off by itself. I tried removing the cartridge, but it burned in my hands. It was steaming on the surface, so I took a nearby sweater and threw it on my driveway. I got my brother to burn it burn it with me while it was burning. We decided to see if any footage had been properly captured. The video disappeared. My brother said he stopped recording within the limit, so it could have been there. All he found was a single picture. It was a portrait of Mario crying in blood as he did in the game. It read, You have driven us. On the bottom, on the outer plastic metal from the game's shell, the sound of the screams that came from my room. I ran to my room to see what was going on, and my door to my bathroom was open. Walking in as I pushed to where the point of tears, my sink was filled with blood. Written on the mirror were these words, It will never end. You have driven us.
Thank you.